Welcome to Unit 8, Black Knight Scholars. Let's get out your Unit 8 VidNotes packet, turn to 8-1, roll up your sleeves, and get to work. Lesson 1 talks about a worldwide depression. And Unit 8 in general talks about the interwar period and World War II. The year is 1933. 25% of all Americans don't have a job. And these people standing in this line in New York City are looking for a job. How did we get here? We're going to talk about it in this lesson. What was the interwar period? Well, this is the logo of the League of Nations, the peace organization that failed after World War I, the Great Depression comes to be, and the rise of the dictators happen. These men from 1919 to 1939 gain power within their countries because democracies don't seem to be working. That's the interwar period. Let's talk about what an economic depression is. This is an emotionally depressed person. He's sad. But an economic depression is a long-term downturn in economic activity and a decrease in a country's wealth, leading to severe unemployment. So let's look at some guiding questions that will help us along during this lesson. Why did the world experience depression in the 1930s? And what political changes resulted from the worldwide depression. Let's see. Let's get some background on the Great Depression, a period of uneven prosperity in the decade following World War I, the 1920s, was followed by a worldwide depression in the 1930s. Depression weakened Western democracies, the West being Europe and America, making it difficult for them to challenge the threat of totalitarianism. That's a long word to say. What is totalitarianism? It's a political system in which a government, a small group, or a single person takes absolute control of a country or a region. Let's look at this diagram. You have the state or the small group or the single person. And that person in a totalitarian state controls church, the religion of the country, family values, economy. It controls the education system. It also controls a country's media, what the newspapers and radio and TV share with the citizens of the country. What caused this worldwide depression? Five things. One, German reparations. Two, the dominance of U.S. in global economy. Three, high protective tariffs. Number four, excessive expansion of credit. And lastly, number five, the stock market crash of 1929. And this photograph shows a bunch of very anxious people waiting for their money outside of their bank. Number one, German reparations. Countries that fought in World War I need Germany's $33 billion to rebuild. Remember, the Treaty of Versailles said Germany must pay this amount. And this is one such country that is in shambles. These two girls are trying to pick up the pieces after war. The only thing is Germany doesn't have that kind of money. It spent $38 billion on World War I itself. So these other countries are out of luck. What does Germany do to try to get themselves out of this hole? Well, Germany decides to print more money. And when you print more money, so much that you lose the value of your money, it's called hyperinflation. So German reparations leads to worldwide depression. Number two, the dominance of U.S. in the global economy leads to a worldwide depression. Why? Well, the U.S. greatly expands its production capacities 
after World War I, by 1929, the U.S. is producing half of the world's goods. That sounds like a great thing. But what if the U.S. economy weakens and fails? The world is so reliant on us that the rest of the world might follow if we fall. But overall, in the 1920s, the U.S. was having success. It was called the Roaring Twenties, and people had a lot of wealth overall. This is a picture of a mansion, and someone who lived in that mansion might own a Model T, Henry Ford's early automobile. And this woman is called a flapper. She is wearing the fashions of the 1920s. And why was the U.S. so strong economically? They had new farming technologies. And the assembly line allowed for the making of luxury goods like automobiles or radio or the refrigerator. Overall, the U.S. economy was good, but that would not last. Number three, high protective tariffs. Tariff meaning tax. The U.S. decided to put tariffs on imported foreign goods to force Americans to buy goods made in the United States and to encourage American businesses to sell only to Americans. This idea backfired and other countries that depended on selling goods in the U.S. suffered. To get revenge, these suffering countries set up their own protective tariffs and as a result, world trade drops a whopping 65%. Uh-oh. Number four, the excessive expansion of credit. And what is credit? Here's a credit card company. Credit is borrowed money to be repaid later. In the roaring 1920s, U.S. banks were giving out loans to people who didn't have income to ever pay them back. Life was so good that U.S. banks thought that it didn't matter. And banks allowed Americans to buy stock in a company very cheaply. This was called on margin. In summary, Americans are borrowing too much money. Banks are letting them borrow too much money. Excessive expansion of credit leads to worldwide depression. Number five, the stock market crash of 1929. The day was October 29th, 1929, right before Halloween. It was called Black Tuesday. And you would see a scene like this all across America because people are rushing to their banks to try to take their money out. In fact, all people are trying to withdraw money from banks at once. Investors all try to sell off their stocks at once. The banks run out of money and can't repay these people. Companies start to fire employees and the Great Depression starts to settle in. Let's take a look at this chart. This is the stock market before and after the bleak Black Tuesday. You see 1927, 1928, 1929. This is the value of the stock market, which is measured in the Dow Jones average. And in these later years, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. But in 1929, there's a peak and then Black Tuesday is, it goes down by that much, by about 200 points in one day. And the rest of the Great Depression, you see how the value of the stock market decreases. What was the impact of the worldwide depression? Number one, there was high unemployment in industrial countries like Britain, like the US, like France, and jobless men have to keep going. That's what this sign says. But the sad reality was we can't take care of our own. This is one town's sad, sad statement. What was the impact of worldwide depression? Bank failures and a collapse of credit. This chart shows you how many banks there were in America, 1926, 1927, 1928. There are a lot of banks, more than 25,000, but 
here's the stock market crash of 1929 and then the number of banks starts to decline sharply to 15,000 here in the depression time period banks fail what was the impact of the worldwide depression there was a collapse of prices in world trade that's not good and Another impact was that the Nazi party was growing in importance in Germany. Here are German people. They are jobless. They are hungry. They're living in poverty. This says, unsere letzte Hoffnung, our last hope. And it says, Hitler. The Nazi party was selling the idea that we will get you out of this great depression. The Nazi party was also blaming European Jews for Germany's economic collapse. Germans, average Germans, believe the Nazis' message. After all, they're hungry, they're jobless, and they're desperate. So here's a campaign poster that the Nazis create. This is a Nazi armband. You see a fist, and the fist is connecting with the face of a European Jew who looks like a little demon in this cartoon depiction. That is the Nazis' message, and the Germans believe it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, indeed. Before we leave today, please answer those summary questions so that you can earn all 30 of your points. And next lesson, we will meet one of the Nazi Party's leaders as well as three other dictators. Until that time, this is Mr. Deegan signing off.